On this episode, I talk about kimchi. Oh yeah, kimchi. I talk about preparing for a public speaking engagement and I talk about the timing of when this show goes up. This is Gary Vaynerchuk and you're watching the Ask Gary V Show episode 19. Fun fact about the number 19, that number was worn by one of the great all-time New York Jets, Keyshawn Johnson. Nam asks, what wine goes well with kimchi? Nam, first of all, before I answer this question, literally as I was about to say Nam, I thought, you know what? This is a cool way to bring back some of those Wine Library TV vibes. Next time I answer a wine question on the Ask Gary V Show, the wine will be here and I will taste it and review it. They're gonna like that. You're gonna like that. Uh, Nam, uh, because I love that style of food in general, as a, as a Russian immigrant, Belarusian immigrant, uh, we eat a lot of pickled food, food as well, and so I, and pickles are literally some of my favorite things in the world. Um, There's a couple different ways you can go, but for me, high acid whites have done well, uh, or oily, thicker whites. So I'm gonna give you the recommendation of Falangina, white wine from Italy, and uh, Santa Barbara Roussan or Viognier, if you wanna go USA on the wine. So those are your two uh, little suggestions. Robert asks, why do you release the Ask Gary V show in the evening? Are you trying to target to East Coast commuters? Robert, great question. I appreciate you having the uh, respect in me to think I have that much strategy. I do like to say everything I do is on purpose. This one though, on the other hand, happens to completely be on the heads of Zach. Not usually Zach, actually. You actually have very little to do with it. Yeah. It has a whole lot to do with D-Rock, who's on the <laughs> other side of this, and it has to do with everything with my schedule. Here we are at 9.30 or 9.40 taping today's episode. Yesterday, when did we tape D-Rock? 1. 1 p.m. yesterday. Obviously, that came out later. It's 9.48. I expect D-Rock, especially with only one video question today, to bang this out. This should be up by 2 or 3 or 1, and we'll be out soon. So, completely predicated on the insanity that is my schedule. Dimitri asks, how do you prepare for an important keynote? Dimitri, the way I prepare for a keynote is to think about punching every audience member directly in the mouth. Um, I look at the audience as my enemy, yet my child. There's this kind of weird mix between loving them with all my heart and really wanting them to get the message. There's a disrespect and there's a love. And uh, that mix is what I do. I I literally am like a boxer before hitting the ring six minutes before I take stage. Maybe that's where Jab, 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 Right Hook came from in some ways because I'm literally in this crazy zone. Eight minutes before I'm talking, I don't even know that I'm giving a talk. I'm like just like doing my email, I'm just like laughing, I'm like crying about the Jets, like you know, whatever it is. But around six minute zone, I go into this weird place and I get very focused and I say to myself, you're only as good as your last talk. And so even though I've had a great kind of seven year public speaking career, none of that matters. The second I take that stage for the next time because you're only as good as your last at bat. And so my friend, to answer your question, Dimitri, the way I prepare for a speaking engagement is the same way I would prepare for war. Jared asks, Gary, You said ignorance helped you innovate in marketing. Do you think any of your areas of expertise hold you back from innovating? Jared, thank you so much for making the Ask Gary V Show what it is. For all you hardcore vaniacs, and I've appreciated all of you. And by the way, all of you lurkers, that means the people watching this show on YouTube or natively in Facebook, because that's the way I've been putting it out, and are not leaving comments are pissing me off. So lurkers, episode 19, get your asses in the comment section. It is the fuel that helps me continue to do the show. Jared, thank you for making this show what it is and what I mean by that is so many of you have heard if you're hardcore about me, which is that my, you know, I, that medium post, like, you know, maybe you wanna put the picture of it up here, like, you know, me failing all my classes is why I'm good, right? Like, my lack of reading, my lack of knowledge of a lot of things, that 
keeps me very creative because I'm not folding into things and using the same thing over and over. There's that, it's a big advantage for me. My lack of education, IQ knowledge on a lot of subject matters really helps me. And so for the same reason I say that, Jared, the answer is yes. The things that I believe in or are more knowledgeable about uh, hold me back because they get entrenched in my brain. I believe them to be the way they are. Now, because it's in my soul to fight and to counteract and to go in the gray, not the black and white and all that stuff, I think I maybe get away with it a little bit more. But truth is, I'm still human and yeah, those things are holding me back. Hey Gary, my name is Mark Sersosimo. You might remember me from this little incident. Please buy Gary's book. My life depends on it. Buy it! My question for you today is this. I have 39,000 Instagram followers. Instagram.com slash Mark. And I average about 250 likes per photo. But I also run the Instagram account for the company that I work for. We have 6,000 followers and we also average about 250 likes per photo. What am I doing wrong on my personal account? I must be doing something right because I have the follower count, but they're not engaging. Let's get into this. Help. Mark, couple things. I do remember you, you're a great dude. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, You know, there's two things that stand out. I took a few minutes to look because I wanted to give a good answer here, not just a general answer. Number one, Vimeo is a beloved brand. to that community more so than you are to your community for a couple reasons. One, I just think a lot of people followed Instagram slash Mark because it's Instagram slash Mark, right? You have like, like that's a, that we saw that in Twitter days. The people that got the like real name stuff have exponentially more followers because we're like, who are these people? Before, and in a world where Instagram doesn't have verified, there's like, who is this guy? I literally think some people are following you so they they think you're Mark Sanchez or some like other Mark. Um, So, I do believe that you have an inflated number of followers who actually don't give a rat's ass about you but they're just following you because of that name. Uh, That's not the diss but that's just what I believe. Uh, Number two, looking at the accounts very easily and D-Rock, put up a little sample of both right here. I don't know if you can frame it but like, you know, and I don't, maybe you can go through like showing six of the photos here so. What do you see difference? What do you see difference? That's why we keep Steve around for grammar. (laughs) What's the difference you see in these things? Here's the core thing. Vimeo is putting a ton of human beings in their pictures, you are not. And I think a strategy of making it more human, not just landscape and pretty pictures, would really help you. Don't forget Instagram is a platform that there's a lot of human emotion to it. It's still a more authentic place than some of the other social networks. Though landscaping and beautiful pictures work, human over indexes, and more importantly, you don't have a mix. The problem is you don't have a mix, and I think you need a mix of the two, and so those would be the core things. That's it, right? No more questions? Very nice. Another episode in the books. I feel the momentum going. I feel the momentum going, but I need more distribution. So the question of the day is, can we make a deal? How do I get my videos on your site? Your little blog, your company's blog. Let's make a deal. Are you willing to make a deal with me? And number two, because I'm noticing a lot of the comments are based on the question day, which I love, but unlike the Wine Library TV audience, there isn't that core audience yet of 50 to 100 people that are giving me feedback on the show. There's a little group, I wanna expand that group. I love the people that really know my brand or new people, like hey, I just stumbled on you because of this and I really enjoyed this, that, and the other thing. The feedback loop is my oxygen. You keep asking questions, I will continue to answer them. 